I've just picked up a set of these moving heads for my lighting rig. I've been running a little stage lighting company for a while now. Here's a look at my work. For the price, these fixtures are pretty decent as they come. They're pretty bright, quick enough to be useful, and very compact. However, I don't find the included gobo wheel to be particularly useful. It's mostly slightly different versions of the same thing. As an example of what I'd like to do, a lot of more professional fixtures have multifacet prisms allowing the look of multiple beams going through the air. I'd like to emulate that. I would also like the beams of these fixtures to be able to match the beams of my other beam fixtures for more coherent effects. So let's do it! Looking at the fixture without all the covers, we can see how much bang for buck these fixtures offer. The overall build is quite impressive. Taking a closer look at the main driver board, we catch a glimpse of the main microcontroller, which appears to be a clone of the STM32. There's a lot of hackability there. Now we'll work on getting the gobo wheel out. It's directly attached to the shaft of this bipolar stepper. We'll need to remove the lens assembly to gain access to the motor. The wheels just tighten to the shaft with these two grub screws, so we'll need to loosen those. You'll also notice that there's not enough room to slide the wheel off the shaft, so we'll have to remove the motor as well. And here's the gobo wheel. It's just a piece of stamped sheet metal with a little bushing to attach it to the shaft of the stepper. Pull out the calipers and start taking measurements. With most of the measurements we should need, let's go ahead and get our CAD on. There's the basic pattern that will make the indexing pin. Now that we've got our model, we'll go ahead and slice it up for the printer. 
I'll be slicing this at 0.3 millimeter layer height since it'll be faster and the layer height really doesn't matter here. Let's preheat the printer and swap in some black PLA. And we'll go ahead and start the print. Here's the final print. It looks good, other than the slot that should have been rotated 90 degrees, and the dot pattern was too small to print. I've installed it in the fixture, let's see how it looks. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not doing great. <laughs> oh man, here, I bet if we leave it like this, that'll get real soft. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's no good. Oh, <laughs> that is a problem. Look at that. That's no good. <laughs> Turns out the black PLA was a bad choice. It absorbs enough light to heat up to the point of becoming soft. I had foreseen this potentially being an issue. It's okay. I have some white ABS on hand, which should reflect the light instead of absorbing it, and it can withstand higher temperatures. So we'll jump back into CAD, correct the mistakes we made on the first version, reslice, and reprint the part. And here it is. Everything looks good, the slot is oriented properly, and the dot pad imprinted successfully this time. The only problem is the wheel is far too translucent to work well, so I went to the hardware store and picked up a roll of this aluminum tape, which I'll cover one side of the wheel with. Let's put down a safe cutting surface and apply the tape. While time consuming, this process did yield the results I was after, reflecting all the light but what goes through the gobos into the metal parts of the fixture to be absorbed. Let's put the new wheel into the fixture and get a look at how we did. When the fixture homes, the wheel ends up slightly out of alignment with the optics because it indexes between the steps of the stepper. To correct this, we simply need to loosen the wheel, align it properly, and then tighten it back down. Flipping through the gobos, they're a little rough around the edges, but that shouldn't be noticeable through the air, and that should clear up in time. Otherwise, everything is looking good. So, we'll put the covers back on the fixtures and repeat this process three more times. And when we're done, we can have a look at what we've got in the dark with some fog.
there's currently a pandemic happening, so I haven't had the chance to take them out to a show with the full rig yet, but I did get a chance to set them and the other movers up in my garage to get an idea of what it all looked like. This mod really makes the fixtures much more useful for me, replacing many of the cheesy gopos with ones I can actually use. This isn't the only mod I have planned for these fixtures. I would really like to add CMY color mixing to them, but that's going to take a lot of figuring out to do. The hardest part to create will be the color flags. I need to create graduated flags that either reflect red, green, and blue light respectively while letting all colors pass or completely absorb it without heating up too much while also letting the other colors pass. I'm thinking adhesive back dichroic film cut in a vinyl cutter and then stuck to laser cut acrylic wheels, but I can't find dichroic film with the right properties. Adhesive back gels would work as well, but I fear they might heat up too much. If anyone knows where I can get this dichroic film or has any other ideas, please let me know in the comments. I'll put up some videos of the full rig as soon as I get it out to a show. Keep an eye out for some more technical videos. I got a few in the works. Till then, so long.